you know, in the podcast, I, I try not to get too political and I, I'm not trying to get political here. Um, cause we're talking about the Raiders about a week and a half ago, their head coach who is, I don't even know who their head coach is anymore. That's the other embarrassing part. Uh, we just lost against the guy, a special teams coordinator. Who's never been a head coach before, uh, in the NFL. So, uh, John Gruden, who was, you know, the, the head coach of the Raiders before he resigned. And then before that, he worked for ESPN on Monday night football with uh, Mike Tirico and, uh, Ron Jaworski at one point, And then Ron Jaworski left and it was just, it was just Tirico and, um, it was just Tirico and Gruden. And then before that, he was the Super Bowl champion head coach for the Buccaneers. Well, uh, what was unearthed uh, in a, an investigation of the Washington football team uh, were emails that went between John Gruden and uh, uh, Allen, George Allen, or was that his dad? Whatever, the, the, the former GM of, of the Washington football team, because they've been doing an invest, or Bruce Allen, I think that's what his name is. They were doing an investigation of the, of the Washington football team because, you know, we're just learning that Dan, Daniel Schneider is a complete scummy person uh, and doing scummy things. And they were, they were doing an investigation on the emails, and they found that there was uh, an email that he sent to... Uh, Bruce Allen. That's it. Said something about the the uh, Demora Smith. I think that's what his name is. The uh, the president or the vice president of the player association. Uh, talking about how he has he, his his lips are like tires or like rubber or something like that, and obviously, stereotypically, African American people or black people my, at have like larger lips and uh, that's just the stereotype at least but uh saying it in like a negative way uh really brought home uh, the whole sentiment that it was racially charged and it was one of those things where john gruden uh kind of looked really really bad and you know pete I'm sure that people were calling for him to get fired. I would more say I was like, yeah, you should resign because that's embarrassing. You know, it's just one of those things where it's like, dude, you're not 12 or 13 anymore. You know, maybe maybe you should be speaking more like an adult, even between friends. And he wasn't even fired over that. He wasn't. Um, and then more stuff came out about how, you know, how he thought that, uh, the Rams picked Michael Sam because he was gay or openly gay, and he called him an F-A-G-G-O-T, and he said that there shouldn't be, like, there shouldn't be female refs or something like that, and he said that Eric Reed shouldn't, he, sh you know, he should be fired for kneeling for the national anthem or something like that. And at that point, it's like a lot of stuff was put out there and he kind of had no choice but to resign. I'm not sure if the Raiders put a lot of pressure on him to resign, but he he was forced to do it just, just plainly because of the fact that he kind of was caught with his hands in the cookie jar. It was obvious he didn't want that stuff being found out. And, you know... You can say that stuff in real life, but when you're like considered an authority figure and you have an openly gay player on your team and, you know, we have a league where females are able to officiate and, you know, whatever players are using, players are using their voices for political or social change. It's just a situation where you can't do that. And whether he was pressured to resign or he resigned on his own uh, because he didn't want to be a distraction, it's it's what happened. And, uh, yeah, dude. Um, I don't really have much else to say about what he said, but the fact that, yeah, uh, that was a pretty good move, dude. I mean, it, it it's just one of those things where 
in today's political climate, you just can't, you, you just, not that you can't say that stuff, you just shouldn't, because not only is it just, like, cringe, it's just kind of ridiculous, you being, like, a 50-plus-year-old person, or a guy in his 60s, and, and thinking, oh, you know, this is funny, or this is cool, it's just not, like, your edge, the edginess time was like for your like your late teens, your early twenties. It's just it's just not sticking. And a lot of people got upset and they 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 talked about how this was an example of cancel culture. Well, the fact of the matter was, how could this be an example of cancel culture when he literally canceled himself? How how do you how do you get <laughs> how 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 do you get canceled if you just did it to yourself? It's kind of like an it's it's just a head scratching situation where people are always whenever whenever someone says something that most people might find reprehens or irreprehen reprehensible irreprehensible I don't know what the word is but the people when whenever people criticize it or complain about it they're like oh this is an example of cancel culture well okay. How, why is it that they can why is it then that John Gruden can use his freedom of speech in order to say all these things about people but people people who who are upset about that and people who you know they're mad that they said that or you know they they feel like they feel hurt by the sentiment they can't step out and criticize themselves it seems like it seems like things aren't going both ways it's actually kind of funny because John Gruden when calling for Eric Reed to be cut for kneeling uh, during the national anthem, it's really funny that nobody was coming out for it. it it's it's funny that no one was coming out for Eric Reed, uh, who was using his freedom of speech, um, when John Gruden said that he should be fired. Um, what's ridiculous is the fact that you know how how is John Gruden gonna and and this is why for a long time I thought that John Gruden was just not gonna be a very good coach it was just because of the fact that you know in that same draft where Michael Sam got drafted like in the seventh round and obviously Jeff Fisher was like yeah I didn't draft him because he was gay I you know I drafted him because I thought that you know he was like a hometown guy from Missouri or went to Missouri and was decent obviously not good enough to be uh, an NFL linebacker but you know John Gruden was all over the all over Johnny Manziel and said that Johnny Manziel was going to be a very good quarterback when we all know that Johnny Manziel was a terrible quarterback and had a terrible work ethic and and wasn't successful in any way shape or form I think Johnny Manziel won like three games in his whole career so it's just not a sentiment that I, I, I would share and, 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 and you know, it, it's just one of those things where whenever, whenever people speak up about what people say, it's always just going to be cancel culture, even though it's, it's not John Gruden canceled himself <laughs> and you might not like that, but it is the way it is. You know, as a professional, there are things that I can't say. There's things that I don't say. The you know, in these in these videos, in these podcasts, there's a lot of things that I want to say that I don't say because I know that there are consequences to my actions. You know, there are things that I've done a long time ago that were really bad. You know, luckily I was in my twenties and nobody knows about me. But the fact of the matter is I can sit here right now and tell you that most of the things that I did in my early years on YouTube, they weren't good. They weren't nice. is isn't something that I, lo that I look at and I say, oh yeah, I want to attach myself and my reputation to that. I don't. And the fact of the matter is, if I get sacked for that, then it, I only have myself to blame. So that's all I have for this podcast. Oh, by the way, at the end of this, I have a, ca I have a caveat here. There's no doubt in my mind that there are more that that there's more to this that the NFL wants to keep under wraps. There's no doubt in my mind. There's there's no doubt in my mind that John Gruden is the only one who 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 was saying stuff like this. Um, even though the NFL outright denies it, they're protect. No doubt they're protecting people. Um, and that's the only thing that I'll say with John Gruden as a possible victim is the fact that you know there's way more. 
way more, way more has been said, you know. And obviously, if I was John Gruden, I'd be, I'd be pushing to, to find that out. If I, if I was John Gruden, um, honestly, I would be telling whoever I could find where the bodies are buried in the NFL. I would, I would openly speak out against uh, about that. And yeah, I mean, that's a situation where, you know, it's, uh it's a it's a chance to kind of get revenge. I don't really care. We all know that there's bodies buried and I know that John Gruden knows where the bodies are buried. And I I would love for him to speak out about it even though he said some very scumbaggy things.